Hi, I'm Steve Clapham, and welcome to another video in the Valuation 101 series. This time, we're going to look at valuation multiples. Now, everybody knows valuation multiples, and obviously, we should just say at this point that there are only one tool for valuing companies, and in fact, multiples are really just a shortcut rather than a valuation tool. And if you're going to look at a company seriously, you need to think about tools like DCF, some of the parts, comparable company analysis, and of course, comparable transactions, which can set a high valuation for the stock you're looking at. But there are two main approaches. There is the intrinsic approach and the relative approach. But what I'm really going to talk about today is the difference between using equity valuations and business valuations. And what I'm going to talk about is you should never use either of these in isolation. If you're trying to value a stock, of course you need to look at the equity valuation, but you should always look at the business valuation first, and I'm going to explain why. These are the multiples, the most common multiples that people use. Um, if you're looking at equity valuations, the most popular one is the PE, but people also look at price to book, price to sales, price to cash flow, the free cash flow yield, and the dividend yield. And in this series, I'm going to cover all of these. And if you're looking at enterprise value, the most popular measure to use is EV EBITDA. But I also like to use EV to sales. Others also use EV to EBIT, EV to capital employed. And of course, the free cash flow yield to enterprise value is also a really, really important multiple. But let me explain why I think that you need to use enterprise value multiples in conjunction with these equity valuation multiples. The PE is absolutely the most popular valuation parameter. You can't pick up an analyst research note without seeing the PE being discussed. And it's very clean, it's very simple, it's very easy to use. But importantly, it ignores different capital structures and different tax rates. And that's why I recommend you also use an EV-based multiple. EV is important in the, the valuation of a, of a business because it includes the total value of the company, including all the debt and including all the investments. It facilitates comparisons between companies with different capital structures and companies with different tax rates. And it's particularly important today where many companies have got investments. So if you're looking at the tech sector, for example, look at the Chinese tech sector. One of the most important elements of valuations of stocks like Alibaba, Tencent, are the investments they've got in other quoted and unquoted companies. You therefore need to use the enterprise valuation in order to understand the business valuation properly. We'll talk more in later videos about how to apply EV and use it in multiples. But the reason I want to just show you an illustration on why you can't use market cap measures in isolation for many, many companies. The EV removes the distortion of debt. Debt, if you've got a highly leveraged company that juices the earnings per share, it juices the returns in equity, and it can make a company look cheaper than it really is. And that's why I say you should always check at least one EV measure. And let me give you an illustration. COVID's been very different from conventional economic downturns because some sectors have been very badly hit and their share prices have often collapsed, but their valuations may not have. And just look at the cruise stocks as an example of this. This data I'm going to show you is a little bit out of date, but it's still very relevant. You can see the chart shows you that the Carnival share price absolutely tanked at the beginning of COVID. And justifiably so, because remember there was that cruise ship stuck in Japan with those poor people on it that had been infected. The share price collapsed and it's bounced and it's been trading about half of where it was pre-COVID. That gives the illusion that this could be a super attractive investment because to what degree has the long-term valuation of the cruise industry been affected by COVID? Sure, there'll be some residual resistance from people concerned about being cooped up, cooped up in a cruise ship, 
But cruising has been a very strong growth industry for very, very many years. It's not been a high return industry, to be fair. But you can see also in that table the, the comparison of the enterprise values. And ironically, the enterprise value from Car of Carnival and some of its peer group has actually been higher today and in recent weeks than it was pre-COVID. The reason is that the companies have built up a pile of debt in the, in the period where they obviously they haven't been sailing. And they've also issued more equity. So if you just look at the share price, you'll be drawn to these companies. But in fact, that could be a very, very dangerous investment mistake. So many of these bombed out share prices disguise a much smaller move in the enterprise value. And you need to steer clear of these sorts of situations because they remain very risky. So the critical takeaway from this video is never use a single multiple to value a business. Don't use equity or enterprise value multiples in isolation. Always use at least one of each. This allows you to value the business and to value the equity. I hope you've enjoyed this. Watch out for future videos. Thanks for watching.